what what's up YouTube so I'm Killer here doing a quick tip for when you're creating a character as I'm sure you're about to see in two seconds as you see I got two different character saves so one character I was playing as for a while decided to restart because I messed up at the beginning so here's the tip video for that. So when you first start, don't make the same mistake I did and worry too much about what weapon you'll have. The weapon that you have is not a big deal. You can eventually acquire all the weapons so the There's not really a big deal on what weapons you get. Can you guys shut it up? Shut up. Shut up. You're interrupting my video. Alright, so we're going to just accept this preset. Because I don't really care. I'm trying to demonstrate something. But make sure that you pick the character that you want. But keep in mind, looks are not really all that important because for the most part your armor should be covering yourself. Bye bye scene. I might be wrong. There might be a feature or something that actually allows you to look at how you made your character, but it just doesn't seem like it's that way. And we're going to go ahead and grab this because why not? I got this, cause why not? Alright, so right now you'll get a choice of two weapons. As you see, every weapon will increase your stats by a certain amount. Pick the stats that you want. Don't worry too much about which weapon they are. If you're interested in going into a skill build, the most optional is the two swords and then the hatchet because they both give you boost to skill. But just pick what you want. Everything starts at 5 by default. Then as you switch between the weapons as you see you'll get one point. So decide the stats that you want. So a quick brief thing on what the stats do. Constitution mainly focuses on life, also resistance to poison paralyze, but that's not really important. Resistance just means that paralyze and um, poison bar to um, activate on you just take a little bit longer to do. This heart affects key and your resistance against fire yeah again like I said and um, with the resistance and key is your stamina courage height is the amount of keys that you got so the higher this is the higher stamina but it's not by a lot you have to put a lot of points in to any of these if you really want anything noticeable. It's only small boosts. This courage is a new stat to this game. It affects key recovery speed and resistance to lightning. And then, um, a aka stamina recovery for key. Stamina affects your life a little bit. Constitution will give you more life, but stamina will still give you life. And everything else will still give you life as you put points into it. It just won't be as much as if you put it into like stamina, and especially not as much as if you did constitution. So do keep that in mind. Alright, but anyways, affects life and your maximum equipment weight. When you're playing this game, your equipment will have a weight value. And 
based off on the weight, your jelly will either get a A, B, C, or D weighting. I think that's also E. But anyways, the higher the agility, the less stamina you use for attacking, running, blocking, blocking, all that good stuff. But, um, the... I'm not that sure if blocking extra E. It might be a high agility, who knows. But anyways, with running, dodging, and attacking, it will definitely do. Um, consume less, and it also affects your stamina recovery too. For example, but only if you get to the overweight state. I haven't noticed it affecting it in um, anything less. So, um, one through anywhere between number one to thirty percent will be an A. Then from thirty to um, 70% will be a B and then 70 through um, 100% would be a C and then 100 and beyond would be a D so yeah D is the last one but if you get to D rating you're going to be virtually useless in battle so do keep that in mind so stand by if you decide to do heavier armor, stamina stand will at least reduce it. So you can actually carry heavier armor. Strength. Is the core stat that to activate special effects on heavy armor. This that also affects your resistance to water, it says. So they seem to have ch changed around its description since the first game. Skill or stat to activate the special effect of light armor. And yeah, they really change around the <laughs> the wording, but yeah, pretty much um, armor will have um, specific requirements to use skills, and strength will be the heavy armor, skill will be light armor. And then dexterity effects the effectiveness of um, ninjutsu and the capacity of ninjutsu and magic will affect the effect effectiveness and capacity of onio magic magics can be used as either offensive capabilities or buffs that you could apply there's even healing magics to heal, if you wish. You can also debuff enemies with magics too, like slowing them down, making them take more damage, stuff like that. I haven't done too much of a look into the magic tree, so I'm just going off on with the first game. Then, then G2 tools can be used to, you know, be more stealthy, do long range attacks with a lot more damage than magic at least in the first game not that sure how well it will play out in this game if they gave it a huge buff I'm still at the beginning for the most part there's Neo is a big game there's a lot to learn but um yeah and also you can use like paralyzation traps and stuff like that so after you pick what you want make sure that you go for the stat that you want if you have no clue about how the weapons work take time here to try to understand the stances and stuff but personally the reason why we started it is because I wanted this dexterity and magic increase before I picked the hatchet thinking hey I want the hatchet as a weapon 
forget the plus one skill that I prefer magic, but I was like, wait, I could get the hatchet right off the bat, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get the magic point. And then also, once you do that, you get to pick your guardian spirit. Now, these will also have stat boosts. As you see, magic, strength, and heart. And I know in the first game, strength affected a little bit of carry weight, but I don't know if they changed it. But pretty much there's um, different forms that you get from these. This form is the Feral form, which is very fast attack. Its special ability can dodge, which is very useful, but personally I would probably recommend not getting this one, unless if you really want the plus one heart, because with if you pick one of the other two, you'll get a different form. And you'll be able to um, still get this feral form after you complete the first boss. The very first mission, first boss, will give you a feral form type creature. So you kind of can afford to skip this guy and go straight to either pretty much the berserk, the um, this one, which does like medium range type thing. His ability just stands in place block, which kind of sucks. Personally, I'd rather have to dodge. But this will teleport you to the enemy if it hits. Or you can go for the brute force form, which... I'm guessing is the most highest damaging. I wonder if I can pull up stats on it. Let's see. Ah, here we are. Yeah, this will give you a better idea on the Guardian Spirit. But yeah, he's a brute form. With this, this is what you require to unlock the ability. Constitution and Strength needs to add up to 14. But let's see. And as you see, this guy will have these abilities. This increases your resistance to fire attack. Our mental resistance is um different it reduces the damage you receive and then you can do this type of thing and then we'll showcase what this guy can do he's a phantom form in case if you wonder what the form's called Yeah, and Rita is your um, power bar. Let's see, see if I can show it. Well, I can't really show the power bar, but you would use it to do blocks and special ability. Let's see if I cancel out this form. Wow, I guess you can long range this. Wow. Why have I done that sooner? <laughs> I don't know how useful that would be. Um, we'll go ahead and switch here. See if there's something I miss here. Nah. Those button does nothing. Alright, let's switch here real quick. Alright, nothing special there. So, this guy does have this long range thing. Which I do not know if this will actually 
you know, teleport you there like this does, but we'll find out. I'll probably do a test on it. Effect, um... Oh, wait, I don't think I can actually... Let's see if this will, um... Allow for me to summon somebody to battle against. All right, there we go. Yeah, so that tell puts me there too. All right. So, a little battle preview. But to be honest, you're kind of better off just going like this. Wow, this guy's so small. As you see, his blocking to the red attack is not really all that great. So, yeah, forget that. Come on, best attack me. As you see, spamming it's not really all that effective. Wow. <laughs> Oops. My timing is off. Yeah, you gotta make sure that you do that with perfect timing. And that's what Yokai Chef is, in case you're wondering. So it's pretty much an ultimate technique to deal some element damage. I think you'll get more damage just by spamming square, but oh well. I did not know about this move. I really should have done these tutorials. <laughs> Alright. But you see this <coughs> purple bar? When you use this defensive ability, it consumes the purple bar. Alright, um. We'll go back to Change Guardian Spirits. And back to showcasing what the sets do. In case if you're wondering. But as you see, more health. 200 sounds like a lot, but to be honest, 
it's not. So keep that in mind. This is a good ability to prevent you from dying from poison or um, fire damage. On top of that, it was used in the first game with, um, I forgot what the talisman was, but it was a magical spell that drained your health. This will protect you from dying from that. And this increases the key damage caused by strong attacks and restore health into proportion to damage dealt to enemies with yokai abilities. Now, yokai abilities are slotable with R2 triangle and R2 square. You will have to defeat yokai to unlock those. But the special abilities will vary based off from what you do. So real quick, we're going to change to him. I'll demonstrate some combat with him. Since the three core things play a little bit different, it's probably a good idea to showcase what they can do. So that, he's the only one that can use first counter as damage without even having to do it right, so. I haven't mastered everybody's time with the first counter. Personally, I prefer to use the feral form because I like a ninja type character. But if you're all about upfront damage, this guy probably the way to go. I need to get this diamond right. <laughs> Long timing. I just can't get that right. At least it can still damage. This is the wolf form. Now keep in mind, based off on what your guy is doing, is it should affect a little bit different. So let's go to the next tutorial. Ah, oh, cool. As you see, that's what the graph is. So I cannot be staggered by enemy attack. That's cool. Showcasing that. Now let's go and showcase the fail form. Personally, 
more ninja like. I'm guessing more defensive like and more offensive murder everything. To be honest. Which is type of like though. Or maybe that's more um to be honest, yeah, this is I don't know. That one's kinda out of place. But anyways, keep in mind, focus on the stat that you wish for the most. So let's show what this guy can do. As you see, able to teleport. He's the only one that can teleport. And as you can see, you can teleport out of danger. Which I like to use as additional dodge button. Needless to say, I spent a lot of time playing this battle. <laughs> so, as you see, Yokai shift form. Now we'll demonstrate on this guy. Now keep in mind, different guiding spirits, blah blah blah, I've already mentioned. to demonstrate the last. As you see, you can be all over the place with a little tacky. Hard to kneel down. And this is just me just willingly spamming. Ah, come on. Now, of course, being locked on is way better. I highly recommend being actually locked on to the opponent. As I'll show. Come on, allow me to shift into your cartoon. Yeah, these tutorials I'm guessing is not meant to do back to back to back. Hello, we'll just let him kill me. I don't think he can, but... Yep. Alright, so... <laughs> this was a bad idea. Run away! Alright, let's go back to change appearance. 
Well, actually, we'll just end it. Actually, no, wait, change appearance. Yeah, they really should have thought about back to back then. But yeah, the most important thing, though, is to keep in mind of the stats that you want. Alright. Don't worry too much about the different forms and stuff, because eventually you can unlock everything. So, do the stats that you like the most. Whatever you think would help you out, stat-wise, going towards your build, do. Like, if you want to be a magical ninja, grab the Kusagame and the Scythe to become a magical ninja. Now we're going to try this again. <laughs> we're actually demonstrating how to do it right. Oh wait, I should have done that to him. Hello. Now we're going to go ahead into the next battle, but this guy can definitely move. Now this is definitely a high movability type character. As you see, easily dodge attacks. Now we'll go, go ahead and exit this. And then continue to change our guardians bit. So you got a basic idea of how that stuff works. I hope. And now then, let's show what he can do. If you want him to do stuff, this is what's required. As you see, your running speed gets increased, key recovery speed. The volume rice is used to buy stuff from the Kodama shop. They are items that you could find by yourself, but they can help. And then lightning based damage. And as you see, this is what they required. But for the most part, focus on whichever stat you want. Because eventually you can get all three forms. So, 
you know, keep that in mind. As you see, this guy's not really able to dodge an attack. This guy gets. This guy can go. Oh, thanks again, bad. Retreat. Nope, bad. Retreat. This guy's all about teleporting. As you see, he's not able to really teleport way right away after attack. You have to wait a second or two. But he does have this, which is... It's your choice which one you believe to be good. Just focus on the cure... The... Stats that you want. If for some reason... You're going for a heart build... I would probably say pick this guy up anyways, since he gives you the heart stat, even though you will still get a fail form after the first mission. Focus on the stat that will help you for your build. Because, for example, if I'm not planning on doing anything strength-wise, even if I like this form the best, it's a useless pick. Because I can get this form later on down the road, and still get wherever I'm going. Like if I'm doing a magical ninja build, this is definitely hands down the best one to pick. Even if I don't like this form at all. So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to do a little bit of demonstration with the weapons. But not too much. So Light attack with the scythe. Heavy attack. Keep in mind you'll learn skills later on down the road. Light attack. Heavy. Come on. Heavy attack. And then top path. Light attack. Heavy attack. Now we're going to switch over to Kusakage. Light attack. Heavy attack. Now you will learn skills later on down the road, so don't worry too much if the stuff seems basic. But this is just to give you a basic idea when starting. Any and all weapons are viable. They just have different play styles. So, do keep in mind of what you want for your build, stat wise, and then later on you can equip weapons that support that build. So, let's demonstrate the Adachi now. Light attack, heavy attack. Heavy attack. Heavy attack. Light attack. Heavy attack. The higher the stance, the more um damage, but the more key. Light attack. Heavy attack. And the key. Light attack. Heavy attack. Light attack. Heavy attack. Now we're going to go showcase the sword and the spear. Alright, light attack. Heavy attack. You'll have to find out which stance works best for you and which weapons work best. Don't forget, switching between stance might be a better idea for some weapons.
while other weapons in some stances they're just far superior where there's not really too much of a desire to switch stance so keep that in mind find the playstyle that best suits you only you will know how you want to play you can look up field guides and stuff try to figure out which one you think would be the best but in the end only you can decide how you want to play the game. There are tons of playstyles and they're all viable, so keep that in mind. Alright. But anyways. I've been showing light attacks first and then heavy attacks second. So, do keep that in mind. And I'm only showcasing the basic combat capabilities because you can master a weapon far beyond the basic attacks. You just gotta use the weapon enough and have the proper skills to unlock. So, do keep that in mind. And like I said, there are such thing as mid stance attack changes. In fact, if you want to switch from stances, one of the better weapons for weapon stance switches is definitely um, the scythe. So you can start with low attack, switch to me. Follow up with a heavy if you have enough stamina. I ran out of stamina. I am pressing the wrong button. So you could go like a full combo like that and just switch in between the stance. If you wish. The low and mid stance are the most switch in between. Without losing back fight, right? But you could do a heavy attack finisher. Your choice, depending on your playstyle. So try to master the weapon that you decide that you like. But keep in mind, pick the stats that you like. First, whichever build you're going for, go for it. Then worry about the weapon second. Like, like I said, I may personally which I'm not, I don't, but I may personally like the Adachi the best. But I want to be a ninja type mage. Then I would still pick the Kusagame and the Scythe to be a mage ninja. And then later on down the road when I find an Adachi, then I'll use the Adachi. So do keep in mind of your build first, weapon second. And when it comes to these core stats, they cannot be changed. Later on, you can refund any stats that you spent anyways, but these core stats stay permanently. So, do keep that in mind. Go for the stats that you want for your build. Because you might think, yeah, the Adachi is good, but it doesn't fit with your core stats of wanting. So do keep that in mind. So hopefully this helps you get a basic idea of everything. I know it's probably pretty long and I'm sorry that's so long. Just want to go through stuff thoroughly but focus on the stats that you like. Then worry about the official weapons or 
guardian spirits that you like. Because, like I said, even though these forms can be awesome, you will want what you want. Now, if for some reason none of these have any stat that you're interested in, if you're not interested in magic, height, or strength, if none of them are within your build preference, then go ahead and pick for who you want. But to be honest, I would focus on build preference. With the weapons, you got all the stuff there, but here you only get a choice of magic, strength, and height. So pick whichever one you think best suits you. Or you could just go for a wolf and just go beat people up with brute force because brute force is fun. Nah, just kidding. Go with this guy, he's better. <laughs> he got super speed kicks. No, wait, go for this guy. He can make giant weapons. <laughs> nah, but seriously, pick the stats that you want first. Then focus on the other stuff later. And during character creation, you can pick how your horns will look for these forms. So, if you want your character to look special per each form, you can. You can even change your hair color based off on the form. So, if you want, you can make it where you got like red hair when you're this guy, and purplish hair when you're this guy, or white hair, whichever one. If you want to make it like color match. And then switch. And then when you switch to this guy, have your hair just transform into like a bluish color. If you want to do like matching it. Or you can make this guy gold here. Blonde here. Brown here. Then um then switch this guy to blue here. Whatever. Your choice. Care to customization only affects looks, so do keep that in mind. But anyways. Focus on the core stats. Get a build in mind. If you do not have a build in mind, and you don't plan on making a build in mind, then make sure that you um, pick whichever one looks better. But to be honest, it's better to try to have a build set up. At least a basic idea of how you want to play. And when in doubt, if you're not that sure how you're gonna play for Guardian Spirits, this one's still a good one because magic is always something that you can use with all builds since you can use it to buff or debuff the enemy. Debuff the enemy and buff yourself, of course, it's what I mean when I say that. Same goes for weapons. You know, if you're not sure which ones you will want for your build, Grabbing another dexterity, I mean, not, and magic point there definitely does not hurt. And if you're still not sure, you know, get a dexterity thing because ninjutsu and magic can be always useful no matter what build you do. Because ninjutsu does have a ability that allows you to revive yourself upon death, which is a great ability which definitely is worth getting in just about any build. These two have pretty much the best support type capabilities for any build. So the sword focuses more on like blocking, countering, spares long range, axe, high damage, but you know, leave yourself open, fast attacks for Tanfa. This does have long range throwing capabilities. So you can be kind of like a sniper with this if you have somebody keeping the enemy distracted or you're throwing, running away, throwing. Your choice. Um, swords, fast attacks. Aldachi, kind of slower swings. Pretty good damage. 
usually. But yeah, just if you don't have anything in mind, I highly recommend going with this setup then. Because that plus two magic will give you more to boost thing capabilities and you might decide later on that you want to be a mage. Or um, the and then the plus to dexterity will help you out with um, being able to revive yourself or you might decide to be a ninja down the road which you know throwing throwing crew knives and stuff at enemies taking stuff out personally I love the ninja build in Neo 1 hence why I went for it for Neo 2 but you know decide which stats you might want for your build if you're going for a strength build grab the Yodachi in the strength guardian spirit if you're going for a heart build, go ahead and grab the sword and the feral guardian spirit. Focus on the stats that matter most to you. Alright. And don't worry if you mess up too bad because you can always um, either A, create a new character, or B, just deal with the stats. It's not too big of an increase. But it's still three points that will definitely affect. And considering that there is a max level, you want as many points into the stats that you want. For example, in Neo 1, 99 was the maximum that you could do a stat. So if you had plus two magic right off the bat, then that would be. Um, giving you a total of 7 magic, which means you only have to put 90, um, 92 in to hit max instead of 94, which will save you 2 skill points for something later on. Same goes for the 1 dexterity, so do keep that in mind. It's more mid-maxing, but to be honest, it's better to mid-max early on than to realize later on that you should have been max a little bit better but you know focus on the stats that's needed because if you never use courage or stamina which I'm just using these two because I'm right here um, picking these will just waste a point into them which is not good or if you're not using strength, picking the strength guardian spirit because you like it the most and picking this and let's say you're not using her either that's waste of skill points that will better be spent later on because once you hit max level you're not getting any more skill points so you wanna spend as few skill points as possible in the tree so do keep that in mind. And eventually, like I said, you play through the game, you will acquire all these weapons. Also, if you have the deluxe, super deluxe edition, I know that you do get all weapon types way off the bat. I do not know it about the, uh, you know, the base game if it will still give it to you way off the bat or what. I'm not sure, I just know I have the Super Deluxe and it gives me all weapons way off the bat right before I even enter the first mission so you know you'll be able to know and no weapons are final you can always switch between weapons later on do keep in mind some weapons focus on core stats which will get more damage based off on that stat but you can always switch weapons you can always use Book of Reincarnation to try to do it. But if you're starting out without any build in mind, like I said, I highly recommend this because chances are you're using some magic and some dexterity in your build. Even if it's just for some boost or some debuffs on the enemy or boost on yourself or, you know, using it. And then with ninjutsu, even if you're just using it to revive yourself, those points will at least be helpful. But anyways, 
you know, just think about what you want to do and just go ahead and do it. Hopefully, this guy sort of helps new people. I I know this is probably a bit long, but I just wanted to make sure I get everything done. So, you know, play however you wish, have fun, but do try to get some friends because this game can be difficult by yourself. It's a hard game, so keep that in mind. Builds will help. See you guys on the next video.